So the other day I was asked about bike fitting myths and I got to thinking about it. So I started to write as many down as I could think of. And I actually had to stop myself at about 20 and, and don't worry, we're not going to go through 20 here. I'm only going to tackle three. So let's jump into that. So the first myth is that carbon parts on your bike are better to have because they're going to be lighter and more comfortable. Um, and now while this can be true, it's not inherently so. And it, it, first, it'll depend on the part. Certain parts lend themselves to uh, being one, to being lighter than, uh, say, an alloy counterpart. Um, and also they lend themselves to, certain parts lend themselves to being, um, having better vibration dampening qualities and basically just riding a little softer and being more comfortable. Um, so some of the components that definitely can um, improve the comfort uh, of your bike, for instance, would be the frame, uh, the fork, the wheels, the handlebar, and the seat post. One that can be a, a maybe is perhaps the saddle, perhaps having a carbon shell or carbon rails. That's I would say that one's on the fence. But one that I can definitely say no to that, that doesn't, and there's some actually research to back this up, um, I'll leave a link in the description to a group that kind of tests this sort of thing, and you can, you can see some of their information, um, is stem. Uh, going for a carbon stem, no matter how well it's made, I, I, it, just does not, uh, um, it just does not show that there is significant gains to be had in, uh, in, in comfort or ride quality from a stem. Um, now, all of these things, the ones that, that you know, certainly can make a difference, like, like I said, the, the frame, fork, wheels, handlebar, seat post, those don't necessarily mean that just because you have a carbon version of one of those things that it's going to be lighter or more comfortable. It really depends on the construction of that part. So poor materials or control of the process of, of making the, 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 the carbon uh, piece can is what makes or breaks whether this part is going to function well or not. And in general, this isn't 100% the case, but in general, the um, the higher cost pieces generally are going to do a little bit better job at this. Now, the one exception to this I would definitely say would be our, our frames. Um, in a lot of circumstances, manufacturers just make frames to be stiff, and that's about it. They don't pay as much attention to to the ride quality um, and to the to its vib vibration dampening properties. They just I, I guess try and allow the the material to to do that all on its own, but that has to be built in to some extent as well. Even if you do have one of these parts that can provide uh, comfort benefits, doesn't mean they necessarily will. A lot of the cheaper stuff does not ride any better and is often heavier than the aluminum um, uh, than some of its aluminum counterparts. Um, what's really common is to have uh, something that is is called a you know either it could be carbon wheels or a carbon seat post or handlebars but what it is is it's actually carbon that's wrapped over an aluminum skeleton and this really won't do much of anything for vibration dampening or comfort anything drastically different than say an aluminum bar um, and often these pieces are heavier than a really well-made carbon piece or a really well-made alloy piece so you really need to be careful about um, if you're truly going for increased comfort, there are there are certain parts that uh, that will do better than others. Um, and I'll do a video in the future here of some of the carbon parts that I like the best. The, the big one that I get a lot of questions on are the handlebars. And so I can go through pretty easily those. Uh, the frames are, are a little bit, or they're just tougher because they, they do change a little bit each year. And... Um, and also just manufacture, you know, there's so many manufacturers that it's it's kind of uh, a lost cause to, to kind of keep up with that. But Okay, the second myth is that you should pull up on the back stroke, of your, on the back side of your pedal stroke, in order to have a more efficient pedal stroke and have more power. I thought this one had been cleared up a, a number of times, but I still get a lot of questions about this, and I still get clients that come into my studio uh, and they and they tell me that they're really actively working on this to to make their pedal stroke better. Uh, the reason this is a myth is 
the the muscles that we use in order to pull up on the backstroke and to and to I guess again what you're doing when you try and what you're trying to do is decrease that negative torque that happens on the back side of the pedal stroke. The muscles we use to do this, which are predominantly the hip flexor complex, um, they are not good prime movers. They are not meant to pull against an active and very strong force like this. They're mostly st- stabilizing muscles. That's most of what their job is. Um, and so they, they just don't do, a, they're just not very efficient at pulling up. And what some of the research has shown is that actively focusing on trying to pull up on the backstroke can, can actually subtract or, or inhibit how well we push down on the, on the, on the main portion of our power stroke. And this is a really bad deal because the the power stroke the downstroke is much much more uh, effective at generating power than the upstroke so we don't want to trade from you know giving off some from the front end to 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 get a little bit more on the back end that's just not that's that that's definitely a bad deal and so i do get asked then about you know one leg drills and this is where it gets a little complicated because some of you may know i do have a video on this and i will link it um, i'll put it up here and in the cards um, and i'll link it below as well uh, but one leg drills, which ostensibly were, you know, started to kind of train this, um, when you're, when they're done improperly, yes, they, they're, you're not working on the right thing. It's, it's not a good idea to train that, that hip flexion to that degree. Um, but I still think that there is a place for, uh, one leg drills and just go and watch that video after this one. And you'll see, and you'll see why it has more to do with, instead of power generation has more to do with coordination. So. And so the third myth is that uh, a bike fit um, on a mountain bike is unnecessary. Uh, I get asked this one actually quite frequently. People call uh, wanting to schedule a fit. They're having trouble on both their bikes and they wonder if they need to get fit on their mountain bike. Um, they might have heard from a friend that, oh, you don't need a mountain bike fits aren't, you don't, you don't need to get a fit on that one. Um, and I will admit, it, it, some, there are cases where uh, getting fit on the mountain bike may be less necessary. And this has to do with the fact that Riding a mountain bike is um, more relieving to our body than on the road bike, and relieving in the sense of uh, the you know the the repetitive strain that occurs. Because on a road bike, we don't have a lot of we don't change position, we don't change cadence, and we don't change effort as much because the terrain doesn't doesn't uh, warrant it doesn't doesn't require this. However, on the mountain bike, terrain changes all you know constantly and we actually coast more on the mountain bike especially on descents and so what happens is on the mountain bike we um, have frequent changes in cadence in effort in um, in position on the bike and all these things go towards just making um, riding a mountain bike from a repetitive stress injury standpoint a little safer than the road bike. Something I bring up to my road cyclists that do mountain bike, or even if they don't, I'll try and um, I'll try and reinforce this to 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 them is that it can pay great benefits on the road bike to ride that bike and do some of our training rides a little bit more like we ride on the mountain bike. So, but uh, on the road bike, it requires some active and conscious control of this. And so, I, I recommend to people that they, you know, that they. Um, uh, change cadence more often, shift into uh, different gears more often, and get up out of the saddle more frequently. Another aspect of the mountain bike that is helpful is mountain bikes tend to be more upright in their posture, and this um, this will tend to um, uh, minimize any of the the, um, the some of the fit issues that people will experience because many fit issues stem from the fact uh, on road bikes anyway that the positions um, are often for most of us that spend a lot of time on a computer or working a, a desk job, that um, uh, sitting at a uh, sitting on the on the bike in an aggressive position is is uh, fairly difficult. So the more upright, more relaxed position of the mountain bike is a little easier. But all of this does not mean that the mountain bike is uh, does not need to be fit. In fact, um, any of the issues that you can experience on a road bike. You absolutely can, and I do man, you know, I do treat these things um, on the mountain bike. So any bike fit issue, um, 
you know, any bike fit issue is, is also possible on the mountain bike and, and needs to be addressed in the same way. So that's it for those three. Um, I'll probably do a different video and then maybe come back in a week or two and do another um, bike fit myths video. If you have any questions or any recommendations uh, for videos like this or otherwise bike fit myths, whatever, um, or just questions on your own, put them in the comments below. You're into this sort of thing, you can sign up as a member on my website. It's, uh, it's free to do, and you'll have access to some members-only content. Um, I will link that in the description below as well. And uh, yeah, check out some other videos of mine here, and uh, please subscribe if you haven't already. I'd appreciate it, and we'll catch you next time. Thanks.